today we will be starting up with the topic cell. Cell as we all know is considered as a structural and functional unit of life. What do I mean when I say cell is a structural unit of life? When I say that cell is a structural unit of life, I essentially mean that everything that is living is made up of cell. I am made up of cell. You are made up of cell. A little amoeba is made up of cell. And the big dinosaurs that had walked this earth were also made up of cell. Now, what do I mean when I say that cell is a functional unit of life? When I say cell is the functional unit of life, I essentially mean that cell is capable of performing all the metabolic activities on its own. Let's take example of amoeba. Amoeba, for example, does its own digestion, does its own ingestion, excretion, circulation, respiration, everything on its own. Therefore, we say that cell is the functional unit of life. How did we actually get to this point where we started understanding cell so well? So here we are going to study about a little bit background of the cell, how cell was actually discovered and how did we keep on making discoveries and advancements in the field. So the cell was first discovered by a scientist named Robert Hooke in the year 1665. So this guy, he made a compound microscope on its own at his home and he observed cells using those compound microscopes. Microscope. Now what exactly did he observe? He observed small compartments. He observed small boxes like these. He named these boxes as cell. That is how we first discovered cells. So this guy named Robert Hooke, in 1665, he made a compound microscope on its own at his home and then he saw such structures which he called cell. Now, where did he publish his work? He published his work in Micrographia, one of the journals that were quite famous around that time. Next advancement that we made in the field was, the, was that Anton von Leeuwenhoek observed living cells for the very first time because Robert Hooke observed dead cells. He observed cork cells. Cork cells are actually found in the bark of a tree. So these cells were pretty much dead. So the, for the first time when somebody observed a living cell, it was Anton von Leeuwenhoek. He did this in the year 1674. He observed it in the pond water. Next, in 1831, which is very, very time later after what the cell was discovered, Robert Brown in the year 1831 discovered nucleus. Then we came on to discovering protoplasm. Though protoplasm was not discovered by J.E. Purginje, but this term was first used by him for the living matter of the cell. And that was done in the year 1839. Proceeding further, M.J. Sledden and Theodore Schwann, these two people gave cell theory. Now, M.J. Sledden was a botanist. So he gave a cell theory that was confined with plants. And then Theodor Schwann was a zoologist. So he gave a cell theory that was confined to animals. M. J. Schleiden gave it in year 1838 and Theodor Schwann gave it in the year 1839. It was in the year 1839 itself that both these theories were combined and a modern cell theory was formed. Now what were the postulates of this cell theory? The very first postulate was that cell is the structural unit of life. Second postulate was that cell is the functional unit of life. Correct? Now, it was also somewhere said that cell carries heredity characters. So these were some of the basic postulates about the cell theory. They said that cell is the, this man, he said that cell is the structural and functional unit of plants. And Theodor Schwann, he said that cells are the structural and functional unit of animals. They were essentially saying the same thing, but one was saying it for plants and one was saying it for animals. So in the year 1839 itself, both of these theories were fused and we had one cell theory which made sure that we are covering all the organisms
organisms that we know of. But this cell theory was incomplete. That is why in the year 1855, another scientist called Rudolf Virchow proposed a modification in the cell theory. He said that all the cells, they come from a pre-existing cell. It is not like the cell was not there, nothing was there and suddenly out of nowhere a cell popped up. That is not going to happen. There is going to be cell, it will divide into a different amount of cells, one, two cell and that is how division will cause a new cell to come into this world. So he said that all the cells, they arise from from pre-existing cells. So that is the last point to our cell theory. All cells come from pre-existing cells. Correct? So this is a little about the basic history of cell. After that, we also got the double helical structure of DNA given by Watson and Creek and a lot of things were followed. But these are extremely important events in the history of cell. Questions can be formulated using these events. So a quick recap. Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered cell for the first time. He observed cork cells which were obtained from the branch of a tree under a compound microscope that he made on his own. Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the year 1674 observed the living cells in the pond water. Next, Robert Brown in the year 1831 discovered nucleus which was quite a long gap between the two. Now, J. E. Purkinje in 1839 used the term protoplasm for the very first time to describe the living components of the cell. Then M. J. Schleden in 1838 gave cell theory for plants. Theodor Schwann in 1839 gave cell theory for animals. And in the same year, it was combined and made one. What were the postulates? Cell is a structural unit of life, cell is a functional unit of life and they are the unit of heredity. Then there was one modification made by Rudolf Virchow in the year 1855. The modification clearly stated that all the cells, they come from pre-existing cells, that the cells will not pop out of nowhere. So this is the basic history of the cell. Questions, especially objectives, can be expected from this portion. Thank you.